So our group was working on a project with friction steerable welding. Basically, we had a steer welding road with a diameter of 3 centimeters and length of 10 centimeters. And we needed to create a simulation of heating it up, um, the tip of a carbon steel road, um, up to 400 degrees Celsius, um, and provide the tuning parameters to heat up that tip um, in about two minutes or in as less time as possible. Uh, what we did, we um, for our project, we developed the first principles model. Then we um, fit the first order plus that time model to empirical data. We simulated it in PI control and Simulink and added Smith predictor to um, account for the dead time. So in determining our first principles model, uh, we divided the rod into 10 different sections and did an energy balance um, on each uh, section or disk. And we made the assumptions that uh, the conduction coefficient, heat capacity, and convection coefficient are all constant regardless of temperature um, to simplify it. And so we determine those values at an average temperature. Um, and we also uh, made the assumption that uh, heat, f heat loss from radiation is negligible compared to convection and conduction. Um, and we also assumed that the volume doesn't change due to thermal expansion. Um, so we get the following uh, energy balance for each disk, where T is the temperature of the disk and T in is the temperature of the disk above or the source. And um, linearizing it and taking the Laplace, we get um, the transfer function in standard form with those as our K and tau as a function of our uh, process parameters. Um, we also fit the empirical data given in the supplemental file um, to a first order plus dead time model um, using control station Lupro and um, we got the following KP, um, tau, and theta for our process parameters. So the first thing we noticed was that our theta, our dead time, was already over two minutes. And so our, um, we weren't going to be able to achieve our first goal of getting it to 400 degrees in two minutes. So our next goal was seeing how fast we could get it there without melting the rod. So because of this large dead time, we added in a Smith predictor to um, account for that in our controller and kind of negate that. Um, <coughs> and then we also did a root locus plot um, to kind of get a, a value of our, our K to start with, which was 8.6. And we tried that, and it didn't fit that well. Um, so we started fine-tuning it manually from there. And the result was a, a KC of 300 and a tau I of 10. And this is for our empirical model. And the two graphs here on the left, the top left one is our input temperature, and the bottom left is our tip temperature. So basically we just kick it up to the melting point for as long as possible and then drop it down to give us the best gain um, to heat it up as quick as we can. And we can get it there in just about five minutes without melting the rod. and then. So once we had that for our, our actual model, we figured, well, what if you're out in industry and you know the rod that you order isn't quite up to the specs you want? So we figured we'd try and use our empirical data and our controller to fit a new model. And we assumed that we'd just do a plus or minus 2.5% of our specifications. And plus 2.5% was pretty close to our regular empirical data with a gain of 100 and tau I of 10. But under by 2.5% gave us a gain of 12 and a tau I of 150. Um, so it's quite a big difference there. And that bottom right graph just shows um, how our controller um, controls the tip temperature for that minus 2.5% deviation. 